graders, we're going to continue the lesson on the conditional. Um, so I was going to go deeper into the truth table because um, it seems a little odd that you can have something that's false and false and leads to truth. So let's look at a couple of the false ones. Um, so I've set up this one. If a cat is a rat, then a cat is an animal. And this is really thinking about the hypothetical. A cat isn't a rat, so that would be, the antecedent would be false, but a cat is an animal. But if you're thinking hypothetically, if a cat in an imaginary world were a rat, um, you'd still, the cat would still be an animal. So you can sort of see how um, it's a true proposition because from a false leading to a true. Let's look at another one like that. If a cat is a rat, then a cat is a rodent. So um, a cat isn't a rat and a cat isn't a rodent. But if a cat, if in an imaginary world, if a cat were a rat, then that cat would be a rodent because it would be a rat. So, um, can sort of see how you can have some false proposition, false antecedents um, lead to true and false consequence and the proposition itself be all true, like in, in here. However, if you look at stuff like this, if a cat is a rat, then a cat purrs. Um, cat purrs, but this doesn't lead to, to this, so it doesn't um, and how about this one? If a cat is a rat, then a cat is a balloon. Those are both false. Um, and so in everyday English, there is not a, um, a truth value to um, some of these hypotheticals. Uh, but I'm going to show you how we can still know that this is how you do the truth chart, even though there are some examples that seem like they break it. Um, Let's go back to this one and our first thing. If I make a face, the baby will laugh. Um, so that makes sense. Yeah, if I make a face, the baby will laugh. And it's, it makes sense if um, we know this baby well and it's probably going to be true, true. But so let's look at this, um, this version of that sense. There's a logical equivalent um, thing that we can say. So if we know that if we make a face, the baby will laugh, then we know it is false that if I make a face and that it is false that I make a face and the baby doesn't laugh. So every time I make this face, I know this baby well and he's going to, so it is false that I make my silly face and the baby doesn't laugh. Um, so that is a logically equivalent statement to this hypothetical. And um, how we would write this one out is like this. So P stands for I make a face and Q stands for the baby laughs. So it is false that I make a face and the baby does not laugh. So let's do this truth chart up here since we know how to do this. Um, so I have it right here with P's and Q's and so we fill it out because there are just two of them, they're gonna be four. So true, true, false, false, True, false, true, false. Then I'm going to finish it off. So I negate my Q. So my t true turns to false. My false turns to true. My true turns to false. My false turns to true. Okay, so now I'm doing this part. I need to choose my P value and my negative Q value. So I'm looking at these two sections. And remember for the conjunction, the only way for a conjunction to be true is if both sides are true. So I am looking for both sides to be true. True, false, fails. True, true, it's true. False, false, it is false. False, true, still false. They both have to be true for it to be true. And now I just did, I know what this is, so P and negative Q, and this is negating it. Not, it is false that P and negative Q. So all I have to do is negate these values that I just got here. So um, false would turn into true, true would turn into false, false would turn into true, 
and false will turn into true. And so I have my handy dandy hypothetical chart over here. And so this is true, false, true, true. Because it is a logically equivalent statement, this is true, false, true, true. We know that this one is always going to be true. So we can trust that um, the, the logical value of hypotheticals is going to be on this truth chart because we have shown that a logically equivalent statement and with things we know are true and don't um, also matches up. So there are a couple other uh, logical compound propositions that have the same truth value and they're also logically equivalent to our hypothetical chart. So that is very cool. Let us look at, um, I want to choose this sentence here. Where did I put it? Ah, ah, very important. Um, so let's look at this over here. So remember, um, if I step, if I, um, the banana will squish if I step on it. So that was, and so if I step, and that would change into if I step on a banana, it will squish. Let us look at this one. It's similar. A polygon is a square only if it has four sides. So on the face of it, we'd look like we'd see this if and do the same thing that we did with our banana and the squishing. We might say, if a polygon has four sides, it is a square. But then you think, um, oh yes. Are there any other polygons with four sides that aren't squares? Ah, yes, that rec silly rectangle just messed our whole thing up. So um, when you see this word only in your phrase, then that is going to mean, um, when you say only if, the right way to do this one is a if a polygon is a square, then it has four sides. So it is going to turn, when you see the only if, that is a clue that you need to keep them in the same order. Ignore where this if is, switch it over here. If, P, then Q. So P, only if Q, is the same thing, if, P, then Q. Uh, let's see another type of thing. Um, so if you have all A's, then you are smart means P implies that you are smart, um, or when, this is our promise one, when you eat your dessert, you'll get, when you eat your dinner, you'll get dessert. Those both translate to if P then Q. Okay, so eighth graders, this is the last little bit of lesson four. Um, we're gonna see how phrases in every English get translated symbolically into the hypothetical. Um, if P then Q, uh, if I make a face, the baby will laugh. I just do if P push you Q. Um, P implies Q. If you get all A's, then you're smart. Um, P, if P then Q. When P Q, that's the promise one. You're still going to write it if P then Q. When you eat your dessert, or no, when you eat your dinner, then I'll give you dessert if P then Q. This one is the one that we learned um, with the only if. If the if is on this side without the only, then, then this is the consequence. And you'd still write it the same way. But when it says P only if Q, you write it if P then, then Q. And you um, move the if to the front. Uh, P is sufficient for Q. That's just a very fancy way of doing it. Um, it meets the condition. So it's, it's the one that's sufficient condition. And... Um, if a condition is met, then the consequence will happen. All right, now these two are the tricky ones. So when you see an unless, that's gonna need to have a negation in it. Um, so how about this one? If I have P stand for, I will wear uh, my Providence uniform unless it, no, I don't wanna do that one. I will wear pant, jeans unless it's dress uniform day. So how I'm gonna write that one is if it's not dress uniform day, then I will wear my jeans. So when the unless is between, you flip them and put the negation in front of the consequent. All right, this is a little bit different, unless P, Q. Um, so unless it's dress uniform day, 
I will wear jeans. So if it's not dress uniform day, then I will wear jeans. And so when the unless is at the front of it, you um, keep them in the same order and you put the negation right in front of the P. So if it's between, they flip places, keep the negation at the front. If it is the unless is the front, they stay in the same places at the negation at the front. You're gonna, your first one with unless is just always gonna be negated, but if the unless is between, flip them. If it's at the front, don't flip them. All right, so I'm gonna go over one exercise that you're gonna see on your exercise four and it's just how you do these complicated long ones. Um, so for this uh, compound, compound proposition, all of the stuff at the end of the alphabet, the X's and the Z's are false. And the stuff at the beginning of the alphabet, like the C is true. So I'm gonna look at this, I'm going to figure out what my parentheses is. So I see an X horseshoe Z. I know because they're both at the end of the alphabet that they're both false. On my conditional chart, when I have two falses, a false and a false, the conditional is going to be true. So I'm going to write a true right under here. Um, now I'm going to do my part in the bracket. So. I'm gonna write everything I did up here and I'm gonna replace what I solved with the true. Okay, so I'm doing the bracket part now. C, over here I can see is true. So it would be, a, it'd be replaced with a T. So if I had a T leading to T, then I'd look on my chart, true leading to true is true. up here. So now I've done that part. True there. Um, so I'm going to replace my Z with an F because I know Z means F. So my final thing would be if true then false and that on this chart over here if true then false the final value of that would be false because that's the one thing the conditional cannot do cannot start off top true and go false so that will be your answer for one of your problems on your exercise thank you for listening um, please post on the homework channel um, questions if you have any questions with this because about this because um, it's a little complicated and I'm sure all your classmates would appreciate having um, some other questions so that they can see what you were thinking and um, get it all done. Thank you, goodbye.